I want to get back to SummerSlam, though. The, the reason, listen, anybody out there with their very timely SummerSlam coverage can give their opinion of Cody Rhodes' match. But you were an invited legend, spent some time backstage. That's what this is. This That's the interesting part of this. We all saw the same thing on TV, but we didn't see what you did from two or whenever the hell you left the hotel. No, I got to around. I got to around probably four twenty. Yeah, so. RVD. Yeah, RVD. Sorry, but Sorry, I gotta go for it. I say yeah, I. I didn't even make. It, I didn't even correlate the reference. I, that's what time I looked at my watch when I, mm-hmm. I got there. But immediately, the first thing is you go directly to catering. That's like wrestling one on one. Because you can always tell the the health of the wrestling business and, and the degree of catering. That's just, you gauge the company's success by the spread. Absolutely. So if I would have walked into the bottom of that Cleveland Brown Stadium, there would have been a couple of loaves of bread and some cold cuts and some cheese with some mayonnaise and mustard, and they just told me to make a sandwich. It's 1995, brother. I'd say 93, 94, 95. <laughs> But now it's, but the thing that the thing we, catering was good, but the catering to the legends box was magnificent. They had a blend wine in there. Of course, I'm not drinking. Probably rated eighty nine. It's you, I think, it's the Diao or whatever. It's at that winery, it's in Palo. This. They had a blend that they make that was it, was, it was a good bottle of wine. So I, I got to watch Sergeant Slaughter drink it. <laughs> what about so, in catering downstairs? Who do you sit by? Do you just walk in and just... I saw, I saw like, Jeremy Borash I saw. So I haven't seen him in fuck forever. Like, we, we, we did all that paparazzi stuff together. Right, that's right. Yeah, Jeremy and I have always been friends. And he works hand in hand with Paul now. So I sat down with Jeremy and he caught me up on everything that was going on from a production moving forwards type thing. He showed me some amazing AI that they have that they can fucking, they can take a picture, a still picture, and they can make it like move for eight seconds. And then they can take a an AI figure, and th- so what they he showed me one that was a, it was really incredible. And it's somebody that had passed, and to see this person move and to see that the as they got closer to the because it was coming like this way into the camera, the face was, and to see the the facial expression change to one of, of anger and almost rage, and have really never have seen that as aspect of that human, which is like, Ooh. so we looked at that and I, we, we, I was just amazed at how technology, how fast shit's moving. And that's something that nobody that reported about SummerSlam saw except me. Exactly. That's you why know, we're here today. I, because what my do you whole, think that- I immediately said, how long before the boys just come in fucking here and do fucking voiceovers? <laughs> Animate the damn match. What well, do you think they'll use that for? Openings? Uh, entrances? You know, it's, I, I think that what it basically is, because sometimes you'll see a figure of somebody and they'll move, and all of a sudden, is they, during that eight seconds, they're, is they're, they're posing as their head goes up. All of a sudden, the, the, the face changes. Like the AI just doesn't have it just completely right yet. So you can see that there's there's some kinks here and there, but you can see just off somebody's phone. Of course, this isn't yeah. this is something that's and he's showing I this is like showing something that shot at the Atlas rocket in nineteen sixty five. This is I'm sure they're way ahead of the of what they're doing now, but no, it was just a, it was a, it's amazing that they're always evolving. That company is just, and for AEW has their place. There are times I enjoy watching it, 
But uh, Tony Khan is scrambling to pull out his checkbook right now and contact the nearest AI development studio after listening to the podcast. Yeah, but you have to know what fuck. <laughs> you ahead. have to know. How, yeah, yeah, you have to know how to get somebody <laughs> over. If you've have never been, problem. yeah, if you've never been over, like, how do you program a show to get somebody over if you've never been over? Do you get when you go? to let's just take SummerSlam. when you go to SummerSlam, are you curious to know at all <clears throat> about what's going to happen that night i don't want to know any finishes or you just want to you want to know if there's going to be a run-in or if someone's no like, i want to watch, just wanna watch it i just want to watch it like a fan yeah no i don't want to i had i talked to the person that put together the punk mcintyre Seth Rollins match. Who's producing the matches now? Does everything come from Paul, oh, or are no. there there's, still there's, talent agents? There's that... talent agents. There's agents. Okay. So I was talking to the person that put that one together, and I said, don't tell me. I said, but just tell me if I'm right, and I laid out what I thought the finish would be. And he said, yeah, yeah, you could say that. I had more of a fucking, more of a fuck than just a flat out. So how many agents are over there now? I don't know, fuck him. I, I think there's one per match. Wow. That's seven matches. Yeah. And then I know that, I'm sure that the top guys could still go through, go to Paul for, to get, I think that because Paul's so hands-on, though also, is the top guys and everyone else on the card feels the freedom to say, what exactly do you want from me out of this? How about wrestling? Enough on this show that we cover everybody on the roster in one fashion or another, whether it's just a flippant comment like, yeah, no, I didn't watch that, I skipped that match or whatever. So is there anybody that, you anticipated might talk to you about advice that you may have given in your own unique way on the air. Here. I I purposely when I, I sat down in the in the in, I wouldn't got it. You always come in. It's, it's like prison, man. You get your fucking food. You just walk in, you get your food. You're not glad handing. You know, I'm not coming in into politic. I'm coming in to get a plate of food. And then as you sit, as you look for some place to sit, now you fucking scope out, now you know who's where. So you eat your fucking meal, and that person who might think that you got something to say to them, or your friends are going to fucking interact with you. And they're, my, my, my two friends were, I had Sean Waltman with me, so my other two friends were running the show. 